So I camped for the night in Stovepipe Wells camping ground, and I was gonna camp rough with no amenities, but it was gonna be in the 80s at night, and I decided I needed to run the air conditioner to keep cool. Now I'm here by the pool, which is actually also near showers. I took a shower this morning. The showers are really tiny, not a lot of room to put your stuff or anything really, just basically a little tiny <laughs> stall. So you just kind of put your stuff, your soaps and stuff like out right outside, but it's a shower in the desert. Last night I had a hamburger and fries at the restaurant up the hill. It's up there. And that was quite good. And I guess it was $20 for hamburger fries and a soda with bacon on the hamburger. So that's about it. We're gonna go have an adventure today. Let's go. So the Devil's Cornfield is just a few miles, maybe two, three miles from Stovepipe Wells going towards Furnace Creek. And it, it's not really a major stop or anything. It's just like you can pull off on the road a little bit. There's a sign and you can take a picture of it. It's not a big major attraction, but the, the plants are very cool looking. These little bushes. So anyway, I took, I took some pictures for you. Devil's Cornfield seeking to capitalize on the mystique of Death Valley. Early promoters attach dubious names like Devil's Cornfield to its strange and unusual features. Thought to resemble bundled corn left to dry in rows at harvest time, the root system of the arrowweed binds the soil around each plant. Arrowweed does well in soils that are only slightly salty and is an indicator of a shallow water table. As the name suggests, Native Americans use the rich stems of the arrowweed as arrow shafts. The Devil's Cornfield, a bit sensationalized for the tourists. The inn at Death Valley and the ranch at Death Valley are part of a larger entity called the Oasis at Death Valley. And there actually is a real oasis here in the Furnace Creek area. As every day, 80,000 gallons of spring water rises to the surface of the desert. Let's take a quick look at the ranch at Death Valley first. Here you will find slightly more budget lodgings than the inn. There's also a general store, ice cream parlor, a nice park, and a museum celebrating what was once the dominating industry here in Death Valley, borax mining. The borax museum is closed inside, but they still have this outdoor exhibit. The old mining equipment, pretty cool. Palm trees are not native to this area, so we have to be really careful with uh, certain plants that aren't native to this area that kind of muck up the ecosystem. Next, let's take a look at a hotel that has a glamorous history. Check out this hotel real quick. You can drive up there when you're dropping off your bags. But this is a tunnel here. It's an old mining tunnel that goes to the elevator. Kind of cool, right? That's the way you enter the hotel. Built in 1927, the Inn at Death Valley was once an exclusive desert escape for movie stars like Marlon Brando, Clark Gable, and Carol Lombard. Inspired by Spanish mission design, the Inn was built by the Pacific Borax Company who had amassed a fortune mining here in Death Valley, but started to see the writing on the wall as other easier to access borax deposits started to pop up in other places. So they pivoted to tourism. Originally the hotel was just 12 rooms, but now it's 66 rooms with 22 one bedroom casitas. The gardens are gorgeous. The beautiful pool at the end is spring fed and always a refreshing 87 degrees. Swimming pool. <laughs> That's what you do during this time of day. It's 
the hottest time of the day until about 4 p.m. from like lunch to 4 p.m. So hot out here. And I guess it starts to cool off a little bit, but not a whole lot. So I asked the park ranger at Furnace Creek, what should I do that's maybe not part of the regular loop that people do? And he suggested 20 Mule Team Canyon. It's just a little beyond Zabriskie Point. And I'm on a dirt road now. So far, it's not horrible. I, there wasn't a mile marker, so I'm not sure, but I'll tell you afterwards what the mile marker was. 20 Mule Team Canyon was named for the impressive 20 mule teams, which were actually 18 mules and two horses, that transported the fruits of mining, mostly borax, in massive double wagons with seven foot wheels through the rough terrain of Death Valley and to market in the town of Mojave, California. Hopefully no one is coming my way. There are places like here where you can pass, but other places where there's not enough room for two vehicles. This method of hauling was used for about six years, from 1883 to 1889. But it made quite an impression on the American psyche. 20 Mule Team became a brand. It's like a one-way drive-through loop to see this 20 Mule, 20 Mule Team Canyon. <laughs> The humongous wagons weighed 7,800 pounds empty and 36 and a half tons when loaded. The entire caravan, mules, horses, wagons, and a water tank was roughly 100 feet long. The 165 mile trip to Mojave took 10 days. A mule skinner was the name of the worker who would drive the mules. This area was also the setting for a famous Star Wars moment. When C-3PO and R2-D2 are heading to the stronghold of Jabba the Hutt at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. Golden Canyon, which is one place I did not get to, was where the Jawas lived. Apparently, park rangers' children were recruited to play Jawas. Look at those beautiful chocolate colors. Interesting that my mind went straight to chocolate. The one-way unpaved road going through the canyon is about three miles. Okay, reasons to go to 20 Mule Team Canyon. Number one, it looks an awful lot like another planet, like planet Zizamek. As a matter of fact, that's the one that I think it's most closely aligned with. Secondly, you'll probably have the place to yourself as I did. I didn't see another living soul. Thirdly, the unpaved road is pretty smooth. I thought it was a pretty good experience on the unpaved road. And fourthly, most importantly, you get to see chocolate rocks. How cool is that? Zabriskie Point, while the view from the Zabriskie Point delights everyone, adventurous hikers may also want to explore the maze of Badland Canyons below. Follow the trail to the right side to access the trail system. The Badlands of Zabriskie Point were once a lake bed which eroded over time to make these wrinkly, chocolatey hills. The dark areas on top of some of the hills is lava from an ancient volcanic event. The attraction is named in honor of Christian Zabriskie, a man who became vice president and general manager of the Pacific Coast Borax Company and devoted his entire 36-year career to mining. In 1970, there was an artsy film called Zabriskie Point, made by Italian film director legend Michelangelo Antonioni. It is interesting to imagine what Zabriskie, the miner who died in 1936, three years after his retirement, would have thought of the hippie free love film from the 1970s. It's a pretty short, easy hike to the top of this lookout point to look at the Badlands. So, not too bad. Paved. Parking lot paved. And of course, there are other trails that you could take if you wanted to go out on a day that's not so hot. Those people in the camper to the right that's taking off are 
right beside me in my camping area. I wonder if I'll see them tonight or if they're done. See what that guy's standing? I think that's the beginning of a trail where you can just go in for a little bit. Well, I'm doing pretty well in the sun today, I gotta say. Way better than yesterday. I've also taken it a little easier today. And it's four o'clock now and it's starting to get cooler a little bit. So I wanna just like peek into this trail that goes inside the, the badlands of the Zabriskie Point. It's just to the right as you're facing from the parking lot, this trail. And it's just like there's a little short hike to the beginning of it. Let's, let's just check out the beginning of it. Well, here's the beginning of it. And then there's the parking lot right there. So it's really not that far. And let's see what it, where it takes us. Does it take us a little more in right away? Well, I guess we gotta go downhill and uphill. Well, let's just round that corner there before we turn around. There's, there's a lookout point up there. <laughs> I almost slipped. Be careful. It is uh, loose gravel, so it's, you could end up getting a bad abrasion on your butt. Okay, I'm gonna have to climb back up. Do I wanna go any further than this? <laughs> I think we get the idea. Very cool, right, folks? But I'm going back up because uh, it's still hot. Man, that uphill is the worst in the hot sun. Okay, on we go. Not much further. Well, like in an instant, it can change. Suddenly I feel very tired. And I just went that little bit uphill. Of course, I see young people, younger than me, doing that kind of stuff without a lot of fanfare, so it's probably about my body <laughs> more than anything. Still, let's not get cocky in the sun, okay? I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Tune in next week for the conclusion of the Death Valley series. Jakarta Prij, spread the love. By the way, very quickly, if you like the show, consider Buy Me A Coffee to help support the show. Buy Me A Coffee is a great way for creators and artists to accept one-time support or membership ongoing from their fans for the price of a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash brainfire to help the show. Thank you. Coffee and some bread.